Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to another episode of Archive 5. So if you haven't seen me do this before, basically this is where I take five kind of unreleased videos, jam them all together into one, and finally share them with you guys. So this is another one of the sort of day trip slash visit episodes, and this is uh, bookshops and libraries pretty much. So as always, the timestamps for this will be in the description below and also on the video here so you know when to skip into if you want to see just one of them. And so today, we're going to be doing visiting High Street Books and Records in New Mills, Derbyshire, visiting Astley Book Farm in Bedworth, Warwickshire, visiting High Peak Bookstore and Cafe, visiting Liverpool Central Library, and visiting a London book fair and the A Life Discarded by Alexander Masters book launch. So yeah, this was a London book fair 2017 by the way. So these are all, like I say, these are all archive videos, but um, some of them have been recut and stuff and they've never been posted on this channel. They've always been on an old channel of mine, which none of you guys have actually watched because <laughs> I, I don't know, I was on, I was on a booktube but I never really took the time to comment and stuff and so I never really got part of the community so I never really made any friends and all that kind of stuff so so uh, I thought I'd, I'd port those videos over to this channel why am I doing my hair now? I don't know, I feel like I need to get it cut again uh, anyway, on that note, enjoy the uh, trips and I will see you later, I'll leave you in the hands of past Dane Hi guys, Dane here, and today we are taking a little look around High Street Books and Records in New Mills, which is in Derbyshire. It's actually in the Peak District. One of the great things about this shop is that not only does it have this huge collection of books that you can see here, there's a Terry Pratchett one there, but also it has like a basement with a bunch of old records in it as well. It's also got a lot of music books. Now one of the things about this place is it is independently owned and that actually gives it its own special vibe. The staff are very helpful inside and they'll help you to look around and find. They kind of remember what books they've got in stock so you can just go up and say, oh I'm looking for some Graham Greene or I'm looking for some Cassandra Clare or whatever your choice of literature may be. Now I was lucky enough to pay this a visit on uh, holiday, so I had a lot of my spending money with me as well, so I went a bit crazy in there. But equally you can just go in and have a little look around, it's one of those bookshops that's very atmospheric and it, it really is just a pleasure to look around. You can see here down in the basement all the music gear and that sort of stuff. And I mean I don't own a, a vinyl record player, but I like to look at vinyls. There's comic books as well. I mean, ultimately, it's just a beautiful little place to visit and have a browse around, and it's definitely worth going out of your way for. So, if you do go and pay them a visit, say I sent you, and happy shopping. Thanks for watching. Okay, well hello and welcome to Astley Book Farm and Coffee Shop. It's one of the largest second-hand bookshops in the Midlands. They have literally tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of different books in all sorts of different genres. This place that I'm in right now is the Ten Bob Barn, which basically is uh, where they sell off a lot of their cheaper books and you can get special deals and all that kind of thing. A lot of these books are really old so it means some of them are just kind of super outdated and some of them are kind of collector's editions which is good news and you can go and hunt through them all. So this place is in Bedworth, which is near Nuneaton in the Midlands. It's not far from Tamworth, which is the town I grew up in. I try and go here kind of once a year or so, I guess, if I can, if I can get a lift there from my mum. It's honestly it's such a huge place. The footage up until this point has been of a 10 bob bar, so we're now going into the main building. I mean, they have kind of multiple floors. They even have a book binder in here as well, all kinds of rare books. my mum. So apologies for the quality of the footage on this, I shot this on my old potato camera, but you, it's still enough for you to get a good idea of what it's like there. There's a Kindle that you shouldn't feed. Mikowski. What 
we're looking at here is their collection of Agatha Christie books, and they have kind of most of the Agatha Christie books, but in most of the different prints of it as well. Plenty of Stephen King as well. And one thing that they do have, which is great, is they have a coffee shop that also serves kind of freshly made cakes as well. So once you've worn yourself out from looking around the literally, literally 80,000 or so books in there, you can go and have a nice, nice little brew, flip through some of your books and enjoy a slice of cake. Here's kind of the graphic novels and there's a lot of sci-fi as well. There's an actual whole sci-fi section, little reading areas. Classics and poetry, which is my jam. Now, a great thing about this place as well is that the prices are really reasonable, especially if you get your books out in the 10 bob barn. But I think in the past when I've gone, I've come away each time with at least sort of 10, 15 bucks for maybe 30 pound, 40 pound or something, which definitely isn't bad if you ask me. The Twitter diaries was awful before you ask. I DNF'd it in fact. That's my mum buying me a cup of coffee. And so that's pretty much it. There's the big basket of books I got. So thanks a lot for joining me as I go book hunting. And um, subscribe and comment and I'll see you soon. Bye. Hi folks, Dane here. And today we are off to High Peak Bookstore. Except it was called Brie Low Bar when I went along, as you can tell. This was shot a little while ago. It was shot on my old potato camera, but I thought it was worth giving it a voiceover and sharing it anyway, just because it's such a fantastic place. So this is in Buxton, which is in the Peak District. I actually went along to this bookshop with my mum while we were on holiday. They have a huge collection of discounted books as well. I think it's 95% of books are less than half price. They have dedicated children's rooms, which have got on holiday and I'd already been raiding all of the charity shops but as you can see there's a crazy wide selection fiction non-fiction big range of genres as well so one of the cool things about this place is that it's also a cafe so as well as going along and buying some books you can obviously stop for a hot drink you can read your books while you're at it as well staff are super friendly again very wide collection of books for you to choose from all at reasonable prices so if you do get a chance to go I definitely recommend it well anyway thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to hit subscribe leave a comment let me know some of the bookshops that you like to go to and who knows if they're near me I might go along to them in the meantime, I'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye. Hi folks, today we are off to Liverpool Central Library. One of the cool things about this place, as you can see, it's got all of these book titles on the pavement outside as you walk in. Now this is actually part of a longer video I shot while we were away. My girlfriend and I went to Liverpool and then to Manchester the following day and this was probably the most buckish of all of the different things we went to visit. So Liverpool Central Library is this massive library in the centre of Liverpool as the name suggests. I think there are about 18 or 19 different libraries in the area but this is, I mean this is just insane, you can kind of see already how big it is. It's got everything from gift shops to little areas you can work and revise in. What was quite cool is that I went along here after doing the shadow panel stuff that I was involved in and that book there, Claire North, was one of the books that was shortlisted. You couldn't see all of the books in this place in a day really, there's just so much stuff throughout there. This is all just the first floor which is the more general stuff and the entertainment and the more popular non-fiction. Then they have little specialist areas, so there's this one for comic books, 
this was in kind of a little, uh, more of a kids study area, I suppose. It was more for kind of school kids rather than, you know, entrepreneurs and, and businessmen. So we're going on to the first floor here. There was a guy on that bank of computers who was playing Bejeweled Blitz and then when we walked past it again he was on Facebook, so I guess you can use that for entertainment purposes as well. This reading room was awesome, but obviously we didn't want to hang around too much because people were actually reading and working in there. It was very quiet, very atmospheric. At this point, I left Becca on the second floor, I think it was, and went up to the top by myself. Just to have a little look around, see what was out there. You can see, really, it's kind of appreciated for its architecture as well as just for the fact that it has, you know, hundreds of thousands of books. Up here in the atrium, a bit, you can normally look out over the city as well, but unfortunately that was closed. We've still got a pretty good view of the, the library as a whole. I see you down there, tiny human. Well, anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, like, subscribe, etc. And I'll see you soon. Right, well... Today's a bit of a weird one. Look, I'm wearing a suit. <laughs> kind of smart-ish. Um, I'm off to London Book Fair, and then I'm off to uh, a book launch, uh, Life Discarded by Alexander Masters, which I'm reading at the moment, and it's really good, actually. Um, yeah, it's about a, di a guy finds these diaries in a skip and then tries to figure out what he can learn about uh, the diary's author. I have a little spot on my nose. Here, um, at Book Fair, I'm basically going to be going as uh, Dane Cobain, the novelist, Dane Cobain, the freelance writer who will write things for money if you pay him, and Dane Cobain, the administrator of admi administrator of socialbookshelves.com, the web's foremost uh, <laughs> book blog. So yeah, I'm going now because I'm running a bit late, but this is what happened. Oh yeah, you're alright.
Monster. certainly did that and it's a book that people were still even 12 years on very evangelical about and I think Alexander's books are about relationships the relationships between him and his subjects so Alexander and Stuart in the first book uh, in his second book Alexander and Simon the mass prodigy living downstairs it seemed to me to have the, that there was the one quality and you can see it you can see what they're they're like and on the past that happened. Have a look. The density of the writing, that seemed to be one thing. But there was another thing about it which was, which seemed to me appealing. And reading some of your blogs and beginning to understand what blogs are about and so on, is this sense of, of coping just with daily life. That you have someone who is not a famous person, like a biography is normally done about a famous person, but here you have a... a when I was talking to a, um, someone I know, or. To a, to a group of people I knew, and, and I was saying, look, what this biography, what appealed to me about this biography is it's about an ordinary person. <laughs> a person can write a million words about itself and forget to tell you its name or its sex. The only thing I know about the writer is that it was the most prolific diarist in history. before people can read them. They have immortal value. A nice day in general, just enjoying myself. No particular thoughts, except perhaps to change my life. Who was this person? The only clues I had about her appearance were from 1961. On a blank sheet of paper, I began a portrait. I tried to work out her height using a mathematical equation based on the angle of her arm while writing in bed. I sent Vince, the private detective, the drawing of the psychotic woman. Maybe, maybe we do have a crime. Of course, you're not supposed to look in someone's diaries. They're secret. I love them. Turning over the pages, wondering what would be revealed next. Hopes, dreams, a life discarded. When I turned up at her bungalow, 60 years after she began writing her diaries in 1952, she seemed unsurprised. She spoke to me as if she'd been expecting me all along. Mm -hmm. 